Hello, welcome and a very good evening indeed to the next installment of our Let's Code x86 assembly, which is based on this book here, Programming Boot Sector Games by Oscar Toledo, aka NanoChess. Check out the earlier videos of this series if you want to follow. Um, I'm not sponsored by him in any way or something, but I bought the book and I liked it. And I am working my way through it. Um, I used to code a little bit assembly programming um, for the x86 back when I was uh, a couple of years younger in the 90s. And yeah, I think it's a very nice book to learn x86 assembly language because the uh, programs are pretty small. You learn a lot of neat tricks. And today we will continue um, in the progress of the book and uh, today's program is called circles i already prepared a little bit over here so we um, don't spend too much time on the things around that and i would call it plasma in text mode i already have a video about coding the classic plasma effect in mode 13 or mode x or whatever um, I tried to link to it in the video description and here in the video with an info card. And maybe we will revisit the VGA graphics effect as well, because I think by switching from Turbo C to assembly language, we might be able to make it much faster, maybe, or at least somewhat faster, um, because we can apply tricks that the compiler doesn't know about, uh, at least the old compiler. So, yeah, but this time we will implement the version that Oscar suggested. And um, I already typed down the or typed out the um, sign table, which is basically a discrete set of sign values that we don't have to compute or anything, but they are just here right in, in the source code. Also the quit to DOS when a key is pressed and the um, label for the main loop. And uh, at the beginning, we're also already initializing the text mode by uh, moving the value two into the AX register and then calling interrupt 10. If you want to look up these things, again, there is Stanislav's, Stanislav's help PC uh, library. And there you can go to the interrupt 10, for example. And here um, you see we are using function zero of interrupt 10 because the high byte the ah register is set to zero and the low register is set to two so we go here and it will say video mode 2 is 80 by 25 16 shades of text of gray text interesting enough it says here well it's it should be color text well maybe dosbox does it wrongly um yeah three would be color text i think oscar tries to do some uh, monochrome stuff here, but I think my DOS box doesn't emulate that. You will see. It will be very colorful anyway, but uh, maybe we can try later on the 486 with a real VGA card if it behaves differently. Anyway, um, that implements or in installs the, um, initializes the graphics mode, the text mode to be correct. Then we load up the AX register with the base address of the VGA text mode memory and that simply uh, lies at 0 uh, xb800 so hexadecimal b800 um, vga text mode video ram address however um, that's of no use for uh, us to store it in ax so we instead move it into ds and es ds and es are segment registers uh, we talked about this before, I think. The uh, 8088 and the 8086 work in um, segments. So since all the addresses that it can use are only 16-bit, we in, could in theory only address only 64 kilobytes. However, already the 8086 and 8088 had one megabyte of address space, that is 20 bits of addresses. And we manage that by also using one of the segment registers like DS or ES, which are used for different purposes, but 
You can use them for like writing to or reading from memory. And the actual address is then um, simply the value that is in DS. Um, taking the four bits, uh, most significant four bits there, um, and then adding that to the AX register, whereas you will get 20 bits in total, and then you can address one megabyte. Um, yeah, completely. It's interesting that they chose to do it like that, to allow for one megabyte. They could have used it just like well, a total of 32 bits, which would have allowed for four gigabytes. So we end up with segments actually that overlap basically. So whatever you write in here um, basically gets uh, shifted and then discarded. So you have overlapping uh, segments. It's a design decision. One more thing, why didn't we just move the value directly into DS and ES? That's actually not allowed. Um, for, I don't know, security reasons maybe, um, that the segment registers are not messed with by accident or something. So you always have to do it like this by using the MOF instruction or maybe using the POP instruction to restore a value from the stack. So you could also go via the stack, we could also push this and then push it twice and then pop it from the stack which doesn't make a lot of sense and this will be faster and more compact. So um, we're doing it like this. So what, what do we want to do? We basically want to have um, the sign function to draw circle-like things. I guess that's why Oscar called it circles.asm. Um, and this should be, because it's very fast, it should be timed in a way. So we need to read out the real-time clock of the PC to, um, basically apply a little bit of a break or a delay uh, when drawing this stuff. Otherwise, it will be way too fast. So let's do that first. Um, the real-time clock um, can be accessed via the interrupt 1A. We can also look that up. It's down here. And function 0 is the read system clock counter. And it will return um, two values in CX and DX, the high order word and the low order word of the tick count. And it's incremented approximately 18 times per second, a little bit more. That's the standard um, frequency of the PC system timer. You can adjust that, but it will mess with the clock, for example. Okay, um, let's do that. So we load up the function in AH as prescribed here by the uh, interrupt documentation. So we write 00 in here and nothing else. Then we call the interrupt um, read system clock. And we get back in CX and DX the number of ticks. And uh, let's do that. Uh, we load up AL with the lowest value, so the lower eight bits of the uh, low order word of the tick count. So we actually take the finest gran granularity basically that we can get. Um, take low byte of the low word of the tick count. Let's call it like that. And then we test this and the test instruction is basically the same as the compare instructions. We can have a quick look here in the uh, assembly language uh, reference at Felix Cloutier's website, which I like to use very much because it's very concise. And um, basically the test instruction works in a way like a compare instruction, but more so like the AND instruction without changing the result. It will only set the flags. Um, instead, you could also do the AND, but it will destroy um, whatever you're testing for. So the test instruction is much better here. And we're testing against 0x40 um, because we want to test if the bit number 6, which is the, actually the seventh bit in the um, 
thing is uh, yeah, bit number six is equal to one. That's what we're testing because this will give us, um, let me think, 64 cycles basically of this tick count. And every 64 cycles, we will reverse the effect that we're drawing. That was Oscar's intention. So this is basically like an animation that runs forwards and then backwards again. So if the test returns a zero, jump if zero, we jump ahead to a new label called M2. And if it's not zero, we will uh, invert the values in AL, which is basically our time index for the animation, uh, to make the whole animation run in reverse. So reverse our bits in AL to make animation run in reverse. All right, um, that's that. And this happens every time basically um, uh, bit six is set. And this will, of course, cyclically turn around when the bits yeah, well, overflow to the next higher byte, etc., etc. Um, okay, of those bits that we have in here, we are actually interested only in the lower six bits. So we, at this time, we will end this thing um, with the value 0x3f. Uh, select only lower six bits. That's why we tested for bit number six, which is, which is the seventh bit actually, because we index at zero. Um, so we basically end with this value, which is 0x3f. This will select only those bits. This will give us a value between zero and 63, but we actually want to map it between minus 32 and plus 31 for a scaling effect basically, and uh, so that we can index into our sign table here basically. So we'll subtract from AL. I could now write 32, but uh, we stick to the hexadecimal notation, so I write 0x20, remap range to minus uh, 31 uh, to, oh, I think it's minus, 32 because we're subtracting 32 uh, to plus 31. So this way around, that's fine. And now we will convert um, extend value to x because we only were working on al, which is the lower part of the ax register. And we now extend um, the value that we got into uh, the whole AX. For example, um, if we had 0B11010 or something like that, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 7, okay, we need one more. Um, this will actually extend the leading ones because it's two's complement as well. So we'll get eight more. No, that was wrong. Um, eight more ones in here, which I did not manage to do properly, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And um, as well, if there's a leading zero, it's uh, supposed to be not in two's complement, so it will extend the zero ahead. And that's the CBW command or opcode that we, I think, did not have yet. So there's convert byte to word and there's convert double to quad and similar things. Um, let's look that up, yeah. And those are exactly for this purpose that you have been working on an 8-bit value and want to expand it into 16 bits or later into 32 bits and stuff like that, notably on the um, 386 and higher. And there's even a version for the 64-bit extension, which we are not talking about here, but it basically works the same. We're sticking to 16 bits here. Okay, um, whatever we calculated now is basically our um, time index, and we will 
put that into our counter register CX. Okay, now we can start drawing things on the screen. How do we do that? Um, basically, uh, our um, data segment was already pointing to data segment, the exo segment point to 0xb800, which is the segment for the VGA RAM, which is nice. Um, now we also need the destination index, which is called BI. It's another register for um, specifying things that we want to store. And usually it will take the address um, DSDI, so the data segment, plus the um, destination index and write things there. So we will initialize this with the value 0. Um, let's write it like that, destination index to position 0 on screen, which is the upper left corner of the text mode. And there's one comma too much. Let's remove that. Um, and also we're using the dx variable uh, to encode the row and the column. So in dh we will store uh, the row value and in dl we will store the column and then we will make a loop over all the rows and inside this loop we will loop over all the columns. So we will have one more label called m0 which loops uh, loop over all uh, rows. And also we will have one more label for a loop over all columns. All right. And um, somewhere down, further down below, there will be some jump to M0 and M1 for looping through this thing. Okay, what do we need to do? Um, first of all, we need to save um, the row and column position on the stack because we will uh, sort of destroy it and then have to restore it. Save row and column. Then we will load up BX with the address of our sign table um, so that we can make a lookup. Then we will take uh, the value of the row, take value of row, and load that into AL. Um, furthermore, we will shift left the value that we have here, which is uh, multiply by 2. Oscar says here he does that because of the aspect ratio. Um, maybe that's correct, because basically in VGA, um, this is basically scaling the uh, sine function to be uh, sort of wider in the x direction than in the y direction, because in VGA text mode, the characters are double as high in the y direction as they are in the x direction. So basically the characters are 8 pixels wide and 16 pixels high. So that sort of like rescales the sine function. Um, how do we use the sine function? That's actually pretty interesting. Um, but before we do that we um, need to limit the value that we have here to the range uh, 0 to 63. So we again apply the AL. Um, register with a, an end mask, which is 3f again. This uh, clips everything outside of the range, um, clip range to uh, the value 0 to 63, um, because those are the entries that we have in our sign table, otherwise we would run outside of that and get garbage results, which would be bad. So on the level of uh, assembly language we have no guarantees that we don't read or write outside of boundaries basically. We have to really check that it's uh, run correctly. And then we will extract the sign value from the table. And there is a very, very powerful instruction for that on the x86 platform. And um, it's at the very bottom here of the list because it's called xlat, which means translate. So the translate function takes um, a value from dsbx 
plus um, an offset which is an AL and writes that to AL. So let's look at our setup. DS is actually pointing to the VGA register, which is a bit annoying. However, there is a powerful augmentation that you can do to opcodes. We can simply write CS XLAT, and this will change the translate opcode that it doesn't read from DS, but from the segment that is in CS, because our sign table is in the code segment here, and we can just take the code segment and then translate. The BX value was exactly um, the label, basically. So CSBX points exactly into the sign table. And in AL, we just computed the value that we wanted to extract. So we have everything set up as we need it to be. And after this CSXLAT call, AL will contain whatever um, value we chose here from the sign table, which is pretty neat. And you can use the XLAT functions to very quickly look up things in arrays, basically. All right. Um, however, again, we need to extend this to the AX. Um, so we do another con by convert by two word, extend value to AX. Here we write look up sign value node CS modifier. This is important. Okay, and then we uh, save the value on the stack. Save sign value on stack because we will need it in a second. All right, that's the sign value for our row basically. Okay, let's move on. Um, this time we are looking at the column. So we are taking DL, take value of column. And now something very similar happens. Um, if I press enter, we are again ending with uh, 3f map to range 0 to 63. And we're not doing the multiply. Notice that. And we're again doing the CS XLAT and the convert byte to word. The very same thing look up sign value and extend to x. And um, now we can actually restore the last sign value, restore sign value for the row. And now we have our values in AX and DX. And what can we do with that? Very simple. Um, first of all, we can um, add both together. So we do add AX, DX. And let's do a quick refresh uh, how that works. Calling the add opcode. Um, we'll add something to AX. Could be an immediate, could be a register, etc. etc. So immediates are only working with AX, but we can do any register to register thing. Um, and yeah, which will be all added to AX. Okay, add both values together. And then uh, what are we doing? Oh, exactly. Uh, also, we are adding the clock value that we got. And remember, we moved that to CX here. Um, this is the clock value. I think, is it correct? Yeah, this is the clock value. Store clock value in CX. Okay, and then we can do that here at clock value. Then we have basically already the um, sort of like the animation here. So now we have to talk a little bit about how the text mode works on the VGA card. Um, it's actually that the high byte of one character cell basically contains the color value and the low byte contains the actual character, which means we actually computed our sort of color value that we want to use um, here. And it's basically in the low value. So we move the um, color value from AL to AH. 
use al as color value vga text mode has um, color plus character stored interleaf basically or let's say it like this it's character plus color actually it's called um, an attribute because you can also encode blinking etc but um, you have char the character in the low byte and then the color in the high byte basically which is why we have to move it like that and we have to write um, the character into the uh, low byte basically and here oscar chose an asterisk just because it looks nice you can pl again play around with different values here which is fine and then we are plotting to the screen so i can simply do um, this square bracket operator on the i which is basically like dereferencing or applying the star operator in c this will use dsdi to store um, a value and that value is whatever we have in ax right um, to screen i could just say okay i could also probably write moff dsdi to ax not sure if that is a valid um syntax here for anasm it is actually it is so you could write that but you can also leave it out because the ds is basically implied i'm not sure if the opcode will get longer if i specify it like that um actually we can <laughs> we can also check that so let's do an ls on uh, circles.com because oscar's always keen on making it very small so and if i write dsdi uh, again assemble and then look at this it produces the same uh 137 bytes so there's nothing changed which is nice okay this already plots the star on the screen but now we have to progress in our um position on the screen that's very simple we simply add to um to the position the NDI basically because as I said we need to advance not one byte but two bytes because we store character plus color or attribute basically you can play around with the attributes you can try and make it blink or something like that which probably looks awful but uh, yeah never mind you can do anything here okay um, we destroyed our values in DX and uh, we need to restore them so let's do that restore row column values and then we need to go to the next column so we increase dl um is it correct uh, next column let's look up here uh, dl has the column yes correct that's fine and um we have 80 columns so we need to compare at some point dl with 80 uh, end of row question mark and if this is not equal we can jump to m1 so no we can do another column basically but if it's the case then we need to increase the h so and it's next uh, row basically and if we increase the row we of course also need to compare if we have reached the last row so we compare the h to 25 because we have 25 rows uh, last row here the same jump not equal to oops i'm not equal to m0 m0 was the for loop for all the columns you can use better labels i just used the ones in the book so you can better follow but i think there could be more descriptive labels um so no not last row next row please and else we will read from the keyboard we don't read the keyboard after every character but after every screen that we render basically 
What are we using for that? Uh, let's go back to Stanislav's interrupt library. And we're using interrupt 16 um, get keystroke status, I would say. So we need to put ah with 0x01, else read keyboard and call interrupt 16. Uh, keyboard int interrupt interrupt so okay um what do we get back uh we get the zero flag equals zero if a key was pressed so that means um mm, the zero flag is zero so jump not zero we could write or jump not equal that's all the same but i would say jump not zero because it definitely says here zero flag is zero if a key is pressed so jump not zero key pressed that means key pressed quit and otherwise we will just go to the main loop else continue running all right um that's i think it let's see if it assembles still it does uh what's the size 163 bytes okay this is pretty small um still way below the 512 byte uh, boot sector limit and i think we'll revisit this again for for graphics mode what did we learn first of all i think we need to see what it does right so um let's start to run it there you go, it's a funky, funky, glittering kind of plasma effect, um, which runs forward and backwards, just as expected. If we were to take out the um, timer, timing functions, it would run amazingly fast. So you can play around with the code like that and uh, see what happens. Um, I would love to enhance this, even in text mode. I think we can do a little bit better and uh, make a proper, uh, a little bit bigger sign table um, that can also run for longer and combine different um, sign, combine the sign functions in different ways, just like we did in the VGA mode. And also we can tweak the palette on VGA cards, uh, which would make it look much cooler because then you can use like 16 shades of some color also as i said um, it should have been monochrome here so i might um, splice in some real footage from from my 486 at the end yeah this looks uh, kind of nice um, it looks like a weird screensaver so we learned today um, quite a bit uh, we learned about the convert by to word opcode we saw the that the translate opcode is very powerful for looking up things you can do um you can use lookup tables basically in a very efficient manner and that can be really fast and we learned how to write to memory especially also to the screen in vga text mode uh, that the vga card uses character plus color or attribute in an interleaved fashion and yeah I think um, it's a very nice little effect and uh, maybe we'll return to this at some point and make it nicer looking or even graphical. Yeah, let's see. But for today, I think that's it. Thank you for joining. Thank you for following. Um, share, like and subscribe and um, leave a comment for sure. If you want to, you can also support me on Patreon, Ko-Fi or PayPal. All the links are down in the video description. It helps me focus more on this, which is totally my hobby. And at the moment, um, I have almost no time for this um, because day job is taking up so much time, of course. Um, and especially these Let's Code videos take a couple of hours of preparation to, well, understand the code, to make it sort of like well to understand i think um of course the book by oscar already does a pretty good job but it still takes quite a bit of time to prepare for this or if i make um my let's code videos on turbo c i do things from scratch so that's even more time consuming so every little um 
donation is of course appreciated and helps me work more on these videos. But that's it for today. I hope to see you in the next episode and uh, have a great evening. Bye bye.